Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander and I am standing out here in the cold late at night opening weekend of Dear Evan Hansen and I am a musical theater kid so I figured let's talk about the musical theater movie and if you didn't know Dear Evan Hansen was based on a Broadway play well now you do it's a play that I find very conflicting um, I have seen it I'm very familiar with the soundtrack which is why I was kind of interested to see how it would play out the theatrically because sometimes they don't always translate and sometimes they translate better than the play does and that kind of does sort of happen in this instant and this one's going to be filled with spoilers because I think that's important for me to explain why I feel the way I do about the movie so if you are not familiar with the show it is about a teenage boy Evan Hansen who suffers from everything you can think of, anxiety, depression, and he is given assignments by his therapist to write letters to himself every day. Dear Evan Hansen, today is going to be a good day and here is why. Except the first day of school, things are not going well. The letter he writes himself is not very happy and the school bully, Connor, finds this letter and it happens to mention Connor's sister, Zoe, in it that Evan has a crush on. Words are exchanged. Connor storms out. Evan's freaked out thinking this letter is going to go out public. And when he gets called into the principal's office thinking he's going to be spoken to about this letter, it's actually Connor's parents saying, hey, Connor committed suicide. This letter he wrote to you was in his pocket. These were his last words. And as Evan tries to say, oh, no, 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 that's not what happened. Connor's mother is so desperate for information about her son. He can't say, mm, no, we weren't really friends and kind of fibs a little bit. Yeah, we were friends. I'm sorry for your loss. But as things happen, lies kind of spiral out of control and uh, yeah, things spiral out of control. This movie and the play itself, it's a hard hitting play. It's not the happy go lucky musicals that you might suspect musical. It's not a spam lot. This is not a Spamalot or Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. You hit upon um, depression, the anxiety, uh, just wanting to fit in or finding your place in the world, uh, social media, social media um, notoriety, uh, the pitfalls that fall with that, as well as, of course, suicide. And... Um, I want to say grief porn but I don't know if that's the phrase I want to use but it feels like that where people kind of insert themselves into tragic situations to make themselves be a little bit more important it's all it's all in this movie and that's why some people kind of consider that it's problematic um, because of all the lies that Evan tells I don't really see it necessarily as problematic you just see this kid who doesn't have the life skills <laughs> Um, to get himself out of the social situations that he inadvertently puts himself in. Because he's got a lot of pressure. He has these um, parents and this mom specifically who's so desperate to reconnect with the son she felt she didn't know and that she failed. And he doesn't want to upset her. And then he has a stepdad who again feels like he kind of failed as a father. And he himself doesn't have a dad. Um, in his life that he can connect with and then he's got the girl that he's got the crush on who's wanting information about her, her brother um, and so him trying to make everybody else happy totally backfires and it's set amongst some of the most wonderful music <laughs> every song is every song I hear all the time because every song is still not every song they did cut out a few songs they weren't missed that much but yeah every song speaks to just trying to find your place in the world and trying to fit in and they all resonate okay so and the car I'm a Broadway star and I cannot sing along with you will be found without crying and yeah good thing I have the mask on because I was teary-eyed and I could mouth all the lyrics and nobody was paying attention to me as I was singing along. So yeah, so in that regards, it's still beautiful. And because it's in the theater, I mean, in the movie, you can see that pain in all those faces. Cause that's the thing is when you see it as a musical, they're all kind of far away and they're in the distance and you got the whole proscenium and, and you can't really, you know, you can get some of the emotion and some of the power 
but here it's a lot more intimate and so I think a lot of the scenes translated better than they do in the play because it's quieter it's closer and because it's so intimate some of the songs that you hear like it has beautiful lyrics it's got beautiful melody and you just kind of sing along without really paying attention to what the lyrics are saying and here you really sense and feel them and it's and it's great it really tears your heart out for example there's a song called requiem that i think i must have heard 15 20 times before i actually stopped and thought about where it fit in the narrative and what the lyrics were saying and it was basically you know about this sister who had a nightmare of a brother who tortured her and tormented her and the family and now he's dead and she's supposed to be sad and while she's sad at the same time she's relieved because that stress is gone and um yeah those are dark that's a dark thought and that's a dark lyric and so here you get to actually see that play out and not necessarily get lost in the pretty melody but you get that pain because a lot of that you know in the theater again because it's so far away you miss the pain this and the confusion this family feels at least i did when i saw it in the theater the confusion the family feels is when they had this kid in their life that was a nightmare and then they find out oh he had a friend and the friend's telling them otherwise and that maybe the son wasn't who they thought he was not knowing that the whole time it's a lie yeah it's dark and it's complicated and that's why I think the movie conveys that a little bit better than it does in the play so yeah I think that's great um and you also <laughs> Ben Platt you now know why, like without a doubt, why he won the Tony that year, um, because he's phenomenal. And I was afraid that the de-aging they were going to have to do on him would be distracting. And it wasn't as distracting as I was afraid, especially that he's playing against uh, Caitlin Deaver, who's much younger. Um, it wasn't as weird for me. I was expecting it to be a lot weirder, but he's just so good at it. The only thing is, though, <laughs> the version I saw of the play our Evan wasn't as jittery as Ben Platt's Evan. Gosh, he's like a chihuahua. He's a chihuahua, but not as yippy. But that, all that anxiety, that shaking, that nervousness, it's all there. Sometimes it gets to be a little bit too much. Like you are anxious with him a lot because you're feeling his anxiety and you know you know at some point it's going to go sideways and especially if you know the play you know it's going to go sideways so you're anticipating that and you're riding that wave with him but overall i i enjoyed the movie a lot more than i thought i was going to it's not my favorite musical in the world um it's i enjoy the music but the musical itself the play the plot i could have taken it or left it but this one I actually really, really enjoyed. So I wanted to give you those those little bit of, uh, I don't wanna say spoiler warnings, but a little bit of warnings because it does deal with mental illness. And this movie does deal with suicide. And those are touchy subjects. And especially if you're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna watch a musical. Those are light and fluffy. No, they're not. Also, this is a musical. This is not, I should say, this is not an Andrew Lloyd Webb book. This is a piece of Compal who did uh, Greatest Showman and Dogfight and, um, Dogfight or Dog Night? One of those, um, La La Land. So it's music with long bits of dialogue. It's not like Andrew Lloyd Webber or Lin-Manuel Miranda where it's song after song after song after song. There is big blocks of dialogue between each song and the songs just help enhance the plot. In this one, they really do help enhance the plot a lot. Uh, so yeah, so if you want to give it a try, totally give it a try. I think if you want something that will move you and really start making you think about your place and what brings you a sense of you, it will also maybe highlight if you are feeling alone, feel like nobody else understands what you're going through, that might highlight that as well. It might backfire. So that's why I want to give you as much warning as possible so you knew what you're walking into. And if nothing else, they're just wonderful songs <laughs> that will speak to you on many levels. 
<laughs> at least they do to me. So if you've seen this, if you've seen the musical, you know, if you've seen both, please let me know what you thought, if you preferred one over the other, or if you were delighted by both. Um, yeah, just let me know. And thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, y'all. You will be found.